We're here at Music Messer 2016 on the Chandler Limited booth uh, with Adam, who's going to show us the, now let me get this right, the EMI Abbey Road TG microphone, microphone cassette. cassette. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, um, so this is a new addition to the Chandler Limited EMI Abbey Road Studios Historic Series. And we're pretty excited about it. It's something that uh, people have been asking about for years, mm -hmm. actually. And um, of course, we're known for you know the TG2 preamp that came out of the TG12345 mixing and mastering consoles. Yep. Um, the the Curve Bender EQ, which everybody loves, uh, coming out of those consoles, and the TG1 limiter, which was the compressor that was in each channel of uh, each input channel of the original TG12345 mixing consoles. And um, actually in 1968, when they made, late 1968, when they installed the TG console, um, it was really, you know, marking their transition from the tube gear, from the tube console, like the Red 51, to the transistorized solid state desk. And it was really the first desk of its kind to have a compressor on every channel. Nobody had done that before, so it was quite unique. So we've always um, had these units in their separate components, and so now for the first time, we've taken them and we've put them back into what they called the microphone cassette in the right. TG console. They literally called it a microphone cassette, so that's why it has the name TG microphone cassette. And what that gives you is the TG2 preamp, it gives you the Curve Bender EQ, yeah. and it gives you the TG1 limiter. And what's kind of special about this implementation of the TG1 limiter is we've now, uh, like people don't really know this, but EMI engineers experimented with opto circuits in their compressors. And right. though they never pressed them into release, um, Wade thought, you know, and Abby Roth thought like, hey, let's try this. And we put an opto in the TG1, going from diode bridge to opto, right. and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. And you could use it on more sources, a lot of melodic type of stuff, but you could also really still smack drums. So very, very cool. And the other cool thing about this is the TG2 preamp and EQ section are combined, but the TG1 opto is actually, it has its own I.O., so it's independently patchable. Okay, great. You could actually use this on one instrument while you're using the TG2 preamp and EQ on another instrument at the same time. Very so handy. independently patchable. If you yep. want it in chain, you just run a little patch cable from the out of the preamp EQ to the end of the TG1 and then out into your DAW. Um, the other thing that's quite cool about it is it is stereo linkable, so you can get a pair of these and put them on your master bus and you'd have a TG master bus, which would be right. really, really awesome. So, And so, the, sonically, uh, yeah. the difference with changing from uh, changing to the opto. Yeah, so it, there, there's a little bit of a difference there because um, the optos are they're they're fast as well, um, but it it allowed us to do more. So you could actually like typically on the TG1 and the the, the EMI limiters, they had uh, switchable recovery times or release times. And so over here, what we did is we gave you variable release. And they didn't have attack. It was always like fixed as whatever it was on the module. Yeah. And we gave you variable attack. So you could actually dial this thing in more. Um, we, we also went back to the original way they had it on the console, where they had this hold knob. And it's not to be confused with hold on the RS-124, where you were infinitely compressed. It, if you think about it, almost like a threshold control, a little bit different, but, but similar. And when you move the knob, the needle moves whether there's audio or not. And what the engineers were instructed to do was, prior to the take, adjust the hold control while observing the compression needle, uh, or meter, and setting the needle for the amount of compression you wanted. Then they would roll tape and do the take, and then the, the meter would swing back and forth, indicating how much compression you were actually getting. Very, very cool. Right, okay, so, a yeah, bit different. Yeah, yeah, a bit different in that way, but like the original. Um, but you can still do sort of that TG1 smacking of the drums. Um, and this is a, a prototype faceplate. It's gonna change just ever so slightly. Uh, this is a knee control here, and it, instead of saying hard, we'll say sharp. And instead of saying soft, it'll say rounded. And sharp quite literally is limit mode on the original TG1. Right. And the rounded is a much more soft, separate of compression, uh, independent of itself. It's uh, it's very smooth, and you can actually do vocals and things like that. Very very cool. Great. And so we have to ask how much it's going to cost ah. and when it's going to be available. Okay. So it's going to begin shipping early June, late Mayish. Uh, maybe maybe let's just say early June at this point. Okay. And you know if we get lucky, maybe a little bit earlier. 
Um, and it's going to be a US street price of $28.49 which is actually an incredible deal for getting one of each of these, you know. TG2 is not much, you know, it's a little bit lower than that by about 500 bucks or so. Um, so it's a good deal. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. very much, Adam. All right, thank you, Will. Cheers. Take care.